we're in Black Park. But we're chilling here with Gary Cool TV. <laughs> um, so, you guys are, are still getting a lot, right? So, um, are you going to have yourself a rest before the new album tour? Or are you, are you, do you find yourself, like, are you a full on getting mad? Well, we've, we've only got, we've got, um, after tonight, the single launch, we've got two more festivals this summer and then nothing actually booked in until the album launch, so th there's going to be a hell of a lot of gigging around then, but, uh, but yeah, up to that point, we're just going to be kind of uh, preparing ourselves for an onslaught. <laughs> yeah, I don't think we're going to be, we're not going to feel particularly rested, are we? We, had, yeah. we actually hadn't gigged for maybe a year or something, because, oh, well, maybe not quite a year, but to finish the second album, and once that was finished at the end of last year, then it, you know, we had we had digs really up until that point for quite a while. But then we had the yeah, tour, we had the tour with Don Glaston and Deadbeats um, at the beginning of March. So it's just been non-stop since then, really. Yeah, yeah. We, uh, we did a month tour with Uncle Glaston and the Deadbeats in Europe, and and uh, then back in the UK as well. So that was that was very full on. And um, mm -hmm. since then, it's been more steady leading up to the album. Then it's going to be busy, busy again. <laughs> Um, so the venues, mm -hmm. I mean, have you got any in mind that you are really wanting to get to? Like, a new places, I mean, you must have done a ton, but... Um, um, we haven't actually, played ones that you maybe haven't gigged at? That you well, I'm not sure. Coco I always wanted to play at, but we just did that, the um, Uncle Acid and the Dead Beats tour, and it was amazing. It was a really great venue. Yeah. I'm not sure. Can you think of other ones that, you, that you'd love to play? So the Royal Europe Albert Hall. Uh, <laughs> some of the European um, mm. venues. Yeah. The, um, Swiss one. Swiss one? Yeah. Mm. Where we play in Switzerland. Um, what, the one in, uh, in, in Basel? I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. No. <laughs> oh, it must be a really good show. show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was that good. We played some amazing... I don't know, I've, I got, think... I've got grand visions in my head, like being... Being an Arsenal fan, I think I oh, yeah, will play the Emirates Stadium one day. But then, do people play there? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, um, I always wanted to play London Astoria, but they knocked that down. <laughs> so they knocked that it down. down. Yeah, did you not notice? Nice. <laughs> Geneva. Geneva. Oh, yeah, Geneva. What was the venue? <laughs> can't remember, but it was so well, we already played there anyway. Yeah, but let's go back there. <laughs> Again. Yeah, the, yeah Geneva the, was amazing. The problem we had is there were so many shows where it's like either day after each or like there was one day gap that it all just merged into one. So like you remember one crowd and you're like, oh yeah, that was great at that. It was like, no, that was at a different venue. <laughs> so you remember that crowd at one venue, but you think that stage was at that venue and it's like... We've got this vision of this super venue, but it's actually about 20 think, different venues around Europe all merged together. Clearly, we never have any idea where we are ever, so... I've, <laughs> I've thought somewhere that where, yeah? where it would be cool to play, okay. up on the Yorkshire Moors. Because mm -hmm. like, we've had a lot of our you know, photo shoots up there. We need to do a festival up there. But if we could actually take <laughs> a rig up there... There play, on top, play on top of the cow and calf rock or something. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I, I have always wanted to play on the Thames on that boat venue. Ooh. There's a boat venue that a lot of like secret band, like bands do a secret show and they do like a competition. You get a lot of punk bands doing it. And I've always wanted to do that, but a boat. Yeah, on a big boat. So how you cool would that be? The, a boat, <laughs> the Emirates Stadium. All the Yorkshire Moors. The, the Yorkshire Moors and Geneva, that will tour that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, That's yeah. going to be the album tour. It's an eclectic mix. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, is that a good answer? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I, I was looking at your bio and you said you toured with Red Fang amongst others. Like, mm. I'm quite a fan of Red Fang. That's quite Likewise. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, one dream band that you could tour with? Iggy and the Stooges. Yeah. Yeah, I've, I've read their rider, it's, it, they look quite fun. <laughs> not possible anymore though, is it? It's not yeah. possible, that's true. We, we are lacking a couple of Ashton brothers. But it is but a dream. Still I would, that, that, that was my dream. Mm, Heartbroken yeah, though. That's true. Um, but I think you're allowed a, um, a band that may not exist anywhere else. That's always a Yeah, I was just in my little dreamland. <laughs> Been one of my favourite guitarists over the years. When I first like got into music as a kid, like it was sort of Jerry Jerry Cantrell was like I idolised him a bit as a guitarist, and so to meet him, that was awesome. So I'd I'd, I'd be happy to go on tour. Like, <laughs> so that'd be pretty cool. 
yeah, I'll take that. <laughs> yeah, where did you get your inspiration when you first started? Obviously, your sound's going to change as you grow as a band, but where did you get that inspiration from? It's kind of a difficult one for us to answer because we all have quite different tastes in music within yeah. the band, which I love about it, and it means that I think we write quite weird music as a result of it. But um, but yes, you're right. That um, we were like certainly me and Jimmy were grunge kids back in our teens in a big way. Loved all of that. Um, so I think that sort of that was our kind of maybe early heavy influences. Uh, but then as we started um, being in bands together, we kind of got really into 60s and 70s music. So, but then that would be kind of like early proto metal, like Soul or Baltimore, and you know early Sabbath and stuff like that. And that we kind of got in in a kind of chronological way into heavy music. I um, think you can kind of hear that in songs like maybe we've got a song called The Articulate Dead, and that kind of you can hear that sort of transition from where well, it's got that kind of mix between you're, you're obviously punk. massively into grunge and you can, it's got sort of a sludgy grungy chorus but then like the driving sort of sort of proto garage of the Stooges and the Sonics and, yeah, and like and the rest a, of the rhythm it's got like. a lot of a punk thing going on with it as well it's so definitely like the, the 90s punk kind of da -da 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 -da, like all that kind of stuff definitely yeah yeah um, yeah, so I think, um, and then obviously Nico joined us just um, just before we wrote our second, well, not just before, as soon as we, we recorded the first album. So um, this second album, like we've had a whole extra fifth person in, involved in the songwriting process, and that's kind of really brought something different to it as well. So uh, so it's kind of ever evolving, really. We wanted to make sure we had basically every decade covered in our influences. <laughs> yeah. Fifties rock and roll and Nico. Yeah. We're, we're yeah, 60s and 70s with us guys. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and then 80s the night is 80s, 80s power ballads, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, a bit of Zaz. <laughs> and Dom. Dom. And naughty Z. Where's Dom? Dom's just naughty. Dom's, yeah. <laughs> Dom with the naughty metal. Yeah. He's a naughty metal boy. <laughs> nice one. Um, so, yeah, I've been listening to Room 13. Sounds really good. Sounds really Thank great. you. Um, is that a, a taste of the whole album, or is it, is it quite a varying sound? Varying. Yeah. It's hard to say, I, I don't, it's hard to pick out a track from the album, which I think you could say would be representative of the album. I think we, we, we led with Tumbleweave, we kind of streamed Tumbleweave um, before we released this as a single, uh, Room 13, because that's kind of still, sounds kind of black mothy, um, but it is a very varied album, I think. Um, uh, yeah, it's, it crosses various different kind of genres, I think, and, and you know, it, it keeps it quite interesting. But, um, yeah, I couldn't say that it's got a kind of... It's difficult to say kind of what musical direction it's gone in. I think it's got... A, a, the, a, the thing I would say about it is it sounds kind of more intense for having been written in a shorter period of time, and it was, it was really... We kind of locked ourselves away um, in, in, in a room and wrote it over largely over a period of about a month um, you know we had a few ideas floating around but it was you know really intense conditions under which we wrote it and i think that that produces a kind of interesting result in itself but it's not necessarily a genre thing i'd say it's rep representative in the sense that it is very riffy it's like it's a heavy sounding <laughs> album um, true but yeah it is very there are, there'll be a few surprises in there hmm. God, we've all been through so much together, really. Like, we've literally been writing music together for so, so long now um, that we've just been through so much, like, life-wise and music-wise. And and, um, and the kind of closer and the closer you get and the more time you spend together as a band, the more kind of natural, I think, the songwriting and everything is. Like, when we get, when we get in the room and play together, it, it all just kind of locks in. Um, and so yeah, that's my answer. Anybody else? We definitely focused more on the kind of sound-wise that we actually want. Yeah. You know, like before when it was the first album, we were like, we went in and we were like, oh, we're not actually sure what we want, and we were trying different stuff out. But I think each of us has definitely got like an idea of what we want, and it's just trying to get that. And this album, with the engineer that we worked with in the studio, Andy Hawkins, he actually like made us focus and help us trying to get the sound that we want live because he's a live engineer as well and he was like this is what you should do do this this will help you more and that's being able to get the album live as well is definitely helped yeah that, yeah that's true yeah, yeah.
I'd, re I'd definitely upgrade as musicians, I say, as well, like having, having played together so long, we've sort of developed a bit, developed a music career, and, and I think maybe, do we take it more seriously? I, I went, when we were in the back of the garage band, we did party a fucking lot. <laughs> yeah. And, and so, wasted for a lot of shows and, and, and like, and I, we haven't taken the fun out of things, but like, um, spend a lot more time doing music as well. Yeah, I mean, do pe people do pay money to come see your shows, so you know, you've got to do, ta you've got to take those things seriously. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, so well, we're a few years older and wiser now. I'm really old. We're fatter. We're fatter. fatter. Yeah. We're fatter, we're wiser. <laughs> really fat. We're still trying, we're still working on it. I put a stone on in a week, I'm quite proud of it. <laughs> I lost a stone in a few days, so. It's good. Oh, there we go. Fat more. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think we've got. I'd say with this we probably we have got better at songwriting as well through working with Jim, our producer Jim Spavulos has helped a lot in that sense. So like, yeah. um, we spent some quite intensive sort of um, you know pre-production sessions with him and that kind of with his yeah. with his experience. He makes oh, us consider fine. every little element of our songwriting, so nothing's left kind of um, unscrutinised. Um, you know, we've actually, we've really had to up our game through working with him, because he won't let us settle for anything less than what we're capable of. And, and, um, and you know, he makes us think outside, a outside the box a bit more, and, you know, try, why didn't you try it this way, and, which we won't even consider, but, you know, amazing things can happen. Like this one song on the album in particular, uh, we don't have to talk about specifics yet. I don't know. There's a song on the album which we were all ready to completely throw away. Like we thought we'd done it to death. We all got to the point where we hated it. And Skavunos just helped us completely rip it apart and, and turned it into a totally different beast. And I can't even believe it's the same song, but we managed to we resuscitated it by the skin of its teeth. And it's actually like a lot of people's favourite now, which is strange. But but yeah, he's he's, he's good. The guy's good. <laughs> One little extra thing in it was it. Have any influence with Jim being such a big drummer? Was, did he have influence with drum on that? Uh, drums with that? Percussion? Ooh, let's oh. talk about the drums without Don being here. Oh. I don't think you'd I don't, I don't, be furious with he Don. Definitely, he definitely was like doing this. Why are you doing it like that? Why are you trying like this? <laughs> he was doing it to everyone, but he was, yeah, because yeah, he was a drummer, he was like this guy who's like seven foot tall, just like lurching over, he's like, Dom, no! <laughs> It's like, play, play, play. do something else, he's like... <laughs> <laughs> but um, I think the other thing that, uh, that, that, um, that Jim, you know, forced Dom to do when he, he you know, he came in with, he really wasn't comfortable with the idea was playing it to a click, um, which obviously just saves you so much time in the studio if you can do that, but it's a lot of hard work and, um, and he took a bit of persuasion, but, but he got there in the end with it and, and, and now, you know, loves it and gets it, but... Uh, but yeah, yeah. Jim Stavrinos has a way of making all of us do things that are, that um, that we wouldn't probably for anybody else, <laughs> including McCready. <laughs> Metallica just hit like Leicester. <laughs> so I mean, does that feel good to see rock like that being on mainstream, or is it just weird, or is it? Do you think it should be left alone? And no, I. I personally, I think. I just I want to see much more of that. I think that I, I, I you know I, I, there's, there's probably people who will, who will disagree with me massively who like who like metal to be kind of like really you know it's a subculture and it's uh, and it's, it's ours and it's, and it's you know it's not theirs and I, I'm much more populist than that. Um, I really do. I just I, I want everyone to enjoy everything and I think if you can in introduce different people to different genres of music and keeping an open mind then amazing things can happen and it makes music genres more interesting if everyone's listening to different stuff anyway. Uh, I hate the idea of, of, um, of you know being a genre of purists generally like people being too set in this this is this that's that I'm, I'm all about throwing that out the window because I also think that you know the more kind of the more sort of openness and exposure that all the different genres can have, the, the, the better, I think. That's how creativity grows, you know, rather than sort of holding it up.